Good Wednesday morning to you. So here's our sneak peek for the week. Uh, Sunday is Christ the King Sunday, and Christ the King Sunday means that we are ending our church year. If you look at the church year, it's, it's designed in such a way that's different from our calendar. Uh, we begin our church year with the first Sunday in Advent, which is actually uh, November 27th. So that's going to begin our church year, which means we have to have a New Year's Eve, a New Year's Day, and that is Christ the King Sunday, this Sunday, November 20th. What it means to end with Christ is, is like a, the culmination, right? We've, we've been around the church season. We began with anticipation, that which we celebrate during Advent. We received Christ as our newborn King on Christmas. Uh, we walked through Lent and, and how we honor him as uh, the Savior that we desperately need, even if it's not the Savior that we thought we were getting. Uh, Easter is uh, the hope and salvation that we receive in Jesus' passion and resurrection from the dead. We go into this time of, of called ordinary time after Easter, uh, but not before we celebrate Pentecost, the giving of the Holy Spirit. Now, throughout most of the fall, we've been in these Sundays after Pentecost, these ordinary times when we are celebrating um, the gospel narrative, when we're looking at how Jesus walked and worked in this world, um, and, and the end of the story uh, ends with Christ. It is Christ the King Sunday. Now, there is a variety of texts we're going to read from Jeremiah. Uh, we're going to read from Colossians. And uh, the gospel text is from Luke 23, which is Jesus on the cross as he encounters the two thieves, the two criminals, one to his right and one to his left. But as a sneak peek, I, I want to focus on this text from Colossians. Because as we get ready to receive Christ as our King, as we think about the end of our church year, I think the most pressing question for us to ask, how do we receive God's grace? How do we receive God's providence? How do we receive God's love that God has for each and every one of us? See, to end with Christ the King is to remind ourselves that the faith really isn't about us not about you. It's not about what you do. It's not about how good I am. Uh, faith is all about what God has done for us and the relationship that God invites us into through our faith. That's why our year ends with Christ, not, not with you or not with me. We don't have a big party to honor how good we've been and we, we don't celebrate how many times we got it right. In fact, the opposite is true. In our texts, as we were in text study yesterday and we were talking about you know, the text in, in Jeremiah, and, and, and this is forecasting, this is the, the first exile has happened, and, and it's forecasting the next exile, but before that, God says, I'm going to gather my people like sheep who have been scattered, and, and they're going to be fruitful and multiply. So even though this, this further exile is coming, even though it's going to get really, really bad before it gets really, really good, God is promising futility. God is promising that, that they're going to, to gather together and, and that's part of his care and they're going to be fruitful and they're going to multiply. And the same is true in Colossians. Paul, as he writes this letter to a, a church he didn't set up, he, he's, he's articulating to them the importance of what they believe. And, and they're moving from this monotheistic, this uh, everything is centered on God faith. They're moving to a broader perspective that includes Jesus Christ, because our hope and our salvation is grounded in Jesus Christ. Now, as Lutherans, we believe in the Trinity, and so it's not that foreign for us to imagine that God came into the world as Christ, one and three, three and one. Even if the concept's hard for us to sometimes grab a hold of, uh, it's part of our DNA to celebrate the three, um, the Holy Spirit, Christ at work, the one who created the world, all as part of one God. But, but for the people of old, for those who had come out of Judaism and only had one God, only had Yahweh, only had Adonai, it was an, an odd concept to think that God could be more than one person. And what we have in Colossians 1 is really a creed. Um, as we recite the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed, Paul is writing a creed for the people of Colossae. He's writing a creed to say, this is what you believe, and this is the ground on which you stand. And Paul does this 
bringing it all back to Yahweh, but extending it through the work of Jesus Christ. So I just want to read to you Colossians 1, verses 15 through 20. Listen to these words. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come, <coughs> excuse me, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm a little froggy this morning because I really haven't been talking. All my house is still, uh, is still resting and getting ready for the school day. So I'm a little froggier than I normally am. Uh, but this is the culmination of who Christ is. And, and really, when I read this, and hopefully when you read this and hear this, it is echoing John 1, the Gospel of John, the first chapter. Uh, you know, he was in the world before the world was created. This is the essence of the word incarnate, right? Christ didn't just appear in bodily form. Christ existed as the word incarnate, and nothing came into being without him. All things came into creation through him. And, and really what Paul's doing here is he's echoing that reality. He's echoing the truth that in Christ, creation came to be. And it's through Christ that creation is restored. Uh, this is the first from the dead, right? <coughs> he is the first to rise from the dead. He is the first to move forward uh, according to God's plan and purpose. And, and so Paul is as he's writing to this church, as he's establishing for them what faith is all about, he's reestablishing the picture of Christ as Lord. And, and I was thinking about this. As we declare our faith, as we live in our faith, we, we probably don't go around reciting the Apostles' Creed to people. Uh, even in our own daily devotional life, we probably don't sit in our living rooms or at our kitchen tables and read our Bibles and recite the Nicene Creed. Um, but to have a creed, to have a belief, to have a, a center statement of what our faith is all about is very important. I believe. I believe that God created at me, and I, I believe that his son redeemed me on the cross. I believe his Holy Spirit fills me and sends me to do God's work throughout the day. It's a very simple creed, right? What's your creed? What, what, what is it that motivates you in your faith? How would you define how God is at work in your life. And would it include God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? As we think about Christ the King Sunday, I want you to think about God's grace for you. I want you to think about how that manifests and how you speak of God and how you live into what God has done for you. If someone were to ask you, what do you believe? <coughs> how would you respond? How would you respond with what you believe? If someone were to ask you, what is it that grounds you in your faith, how might you respond? See, our readings from Jeremiah and Colossians get us ready for what God has done through Jesus Christ. And what God has done through Jesus Christ is exactly the heart of what we celebrate this Sunday in Christ the King. So here's your sneak peek for the week. I can't wait to see you on Sunday. Don't forget uh, we are having a service at 8.30 and a service at 11 o'clock. That's just this week. We are not eliminating the middle service on a normal basis, but this week especially, we're going to have this visioning um, gathering on Sunday at 10 o'clock. There's going to be time for fellowship, and then we're gathering together at 10 o'clock to just talk about who we are as a congregation, the image that we bear to our community, and the work we are called to do. I can't wait to see you on Sunday. I hope you are excited as, for, as excited for this as I am and hope you're having a great week.